95.5 FM, 15.66 across the county. And don't forget, of course, we're there every day at bbc.co.uk slash Somerset. And Vernon Harwood looking after things for Emma all this week. Now, if you were listening to Breakfast this morning, you would have heard from people in Somerset left thousands of pounds in debt after signing up for timeshare deals they then couldn't get out of. In November, five directors of St Francis Marketing, based in Exeter, pleaded guilty to unfair trading practices. Customers were promised discounts and that the firm would buy back the timeshare deals after two years, but were instead just left with huge debts. Carol Richards from Washford took out a £12,000 loan through the company, but never went on a holiday. I feel very foolish, pretty stupid. I've lost a lot of money. I feel conned and silly. We would end up having to pay on the card. It was £360 a month just for that £12,000 loan, plus they wanted £1,000 in maintenance charges. That's a year. We are still paying it off. Unfortunately, we can't afford to pay it off at that rate that was set, so um, it's had a big effect on our finances and we've actually had to go to the Consumer Credit Council and put all of our finances into there and we're paying them so much a month. They pay the bank, I think it's about 50-something pound we pay a month and yet when I get a statement from that bank, it started off at £12,000 and is now 12,700 and something pound I'm still owing. Well, there is now hope for people like Carol, as last week some customers settled their debts with the banks. Well, David Green is from the law firm Edwin Co. and represents them. Hello, David. Thanks for joining us today. Hello, Bernard. And also with me in the studio is Philip Watson, who's the Managing Director of Worldwide Timeshare Hypermarket and a Director of the Industry Trade Body. Morning to you. Good morning. Thanks morning. for coming in. Uh, now, they're here and can answer your questions on Timeshare this morning. Whatever your experience or your question or query, pick up the phone 0845 303 1566 you can send an email to us here at bbc somerset very easy just uh, send it to somerset at bbc.co.uk and our text line 81333 and you'll need to start your message with the word somerset so somerset then your message and 81333 so, um, there is some confusion, isn't there, Philip, over the term timeshare. So, from from what you experience day in, day out, what is a timeshare and how is it different from a holiday club? And very simply, a holiday club is like, I suppose, an advanced um, travel agent where they utilise timeshare results as their product to sell on so you really and truthfully you're not buying a timeshare you're buying into a club that allows you to use the timeshare results as and when they become available whereas a timeshare is where you actually own the right to use a specific property in a particular area resort mostly for perpetuity but some are also leasehold so that might be for a fortnight the same fortnight every year for the next whatever 40 years in basic terms yes however there are major exchange companies that allow you to exchange that into other areas and other resorts so you don't have to go to the same place every year year in year out right okay i was going to say that because the, i was uh, well, the question i was going to ask you is that if you're offered uh, the opportunity to go to a different place every year is that really a holiday club no. You can see why people get confused then, can't I you? I do very much, and I feel very sorry for people like Carol because they haven't actually bought anything. They've bought an expensive travel agency, which is rather alarming, and what annoyed me was these five directors got fined and didn't get imprisoned. They should have been imprisoned. There is, isn't there, though, so much confusion as we've gathered from this, and the, the, the phrase timeshare comes loaded with all sorts of preconceptions... Explain to us why a timeshare is good. Because having heard Carol's story, a lot of people will say, not with a 12-foot barge pole, thank you. No, I appreciate that, and I understand why they would think that, but what you've got to ask yourself, what did Carol buy? She didn't actually buy a timeshare. Well, she didn't know that, though. No, I appreciate that. Again, these con merchants seem to have a, a particular way about them, and they, they prey on people's feelings and what they're looking for 
and at the end of the day they seem to win over and people buy it from them. However, if they were to buy a timeshare, for example, if they bought Marriott Sun and Thames in, in Mallorca, everyone knows the word Marriott. Everyone knows the hotel group. They know the quality and the standards that you're buying into. And what you're doing is you're buying into a four- or five-star luxury apartment as opposed to a holiday room or a holiday hotel, and therefore you're buying a quality, and you then have the right to use that particular property year in, year out. OK, well, let's talk to David Green, then, from the law firm Edwin Co. I have to say what Philip says sounds good, doesn't it? Well, uh, first of all is that um, um, Philip's talking about um, holiday clubs, um, but in fact they are effectively timeshare, and the great thing about the timeshare industry is that uh, what it tries to do is distance itself from the word timeshare. And St. Francis, for instance, which, which we're talking about, did that very thing. When people asked, are you timeshare, they answered no. But in fact, they were timeshare. They were precisely timeshare. They were buying holiday points with one of the largest timeshare providers. And it was timeshare. So it's, it's, it was a con. Uh, and the trouble is that um, timeshare product, it can, as a concept at least, work. Uh, and as I'm sure as Philip explains it, it can work, and there are many thousands of people who are happy with the product. But the trouble is it attracts con artists, and there are con artists at every level of the timeshare process. Uh, and that's a real problem, and, and St. Francis was just an example of one of the cons that goes on with people. Our number here, 0845 303 1566, if you've got questions or queries or something about the whole timeshare industry that you've always wondered about, or maybe you've had your fingers burnt. 0845 303 1566. Philip, um, we are talking here about timeshares. You use the phrase holiday clubs. David says, frankly, they're the same thing. Are you being a bit disingenuous? No, I, I, I agree in some ways what David is saying and unfortunately a lot of people don't fully understand exactly what a holiday club is and what a timeshare is. And because the holiday clubs tend to use the timeshare product to evolve their clubs, everybody associates it with timeshare. Well, I wonder well, between I, the... Yeah, go on, you have your say, well, and then I, I'll, I'll I, see I, if we can get some, <laughs> some clarity here after I, that. I need to say that um, the, the holiday clubs, holiday points, uh, and various other products which try and distance themselves from timeshare, because timeshare has such a bad reputation, are in fact covered by the timeshare regulations. Uh, and indeed, this trying to steer away from the word timeshare is, I think, a problem. There is a complete lack of transparency about the process, and um, with all respect to Philip, is that uh, the timeshare industry really needs to clean up its act. There are some good providers, but they are really done down by the, the, the process and the lack of transparency. And can we just take two examples? You've just had uh, a consumer uh, on. First of all, she talked about the upfront fee. Well, they had to pay a huge fee in order to buy holiday rights. In addition to that, they then get locked into maintenance fees. Uh, and maintenance fees is a really big problem in timeshares. When people enter these contracts, what they're not understanding is that they're entering into a contract to pay what can be a substantial payment for maintenance over a long period, and it's very difficult to escape. And, and one of the consequences of that is people try and resell them, try and get rid of them because they've got this obligation. Of course, that's got another line of uh, con to it, uh, which uh, the timeshare industry has tried to address, but people, people have to pay upfront fees to try and rid themselves of the problem. And, and it, it, the maintenance fees, I think, is the next big issue that the timeshare industry needs to look at and clean up. Let me we'll discuss some, if not all, of those issues in the course of the next few minutes. Can I just, between the three of us, try and get a bit of clarity... Um, if you're offered some sort of deal, whether it's called a timeshare or a holiday club or holiday points or whatever, what can you tell is a genuine deal and is there a way of telling if it is a con? Let's start with David. Well, I think it's, it's the, the, the con comes with the representations that are made. First of all, if it's too good to be true, it's untrue. You need to step away, and, and the new regulations allow you to step away. You should never buy on the day. 
if someone is being honest with you, they'll be transparent and they'll allow you to go away and think about it. That's, that's what I think, is the first rule. Now, what happens in timeshare too often is there's pressure selling. People are invited to presentations. The sort of uh, thing where uh, this deal has to, you know, it has to be done by five o'clock. And it, it, ab- absolutely, that, it, that is just one of one. You hear stories <laughs> about people being locked in, on, well, maybe physically, but certainly metaphorically locked in a room for hours on end. Well, uh, the, w- what they're offered, first of all, is someone rings them up and they say, oh, we're, we're, there's a deal, there's a free holiday, you can have a free holiday, and you can turn up for a presentation, maybe two hours, and you get a free holiday. Well, in fact, the holiday's not free. You do actually have to pay uh, something for it. Second, is you may be there for six hours. I mean, many people in, in St. Francis were there for many hours, and in the end, they feel foolish about it now. They just wanted to get out, and they were saying, well, OK, I'll sign just to get out. So basically, if it, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Nobody's going to give you a free holiday, so if that's the phrase that's used, don't. And if somebody puts a time limit on signing a piece of paper... Walk away. Walk away. OK, well, let's get Philip's view on this. Philip Watson is the MD of Worldwide Timeshare Hypermarket. What would you say are the signs to distinguish between a con and the real thing? Exactly the same, unfortunately. Um, I admire the phrase, if it's too good to be true, then it isn't, because that's quite the case very often. Uh, as you know, in timeshare, people are invited in for a presentation. But the problem with the product isn't the product. The product is good, it's the way that it's sold, and this is where people well, like what I'm, what I'm after, in the, in the same way that David did, what I'm after is what can we spot, what can we see and what can we hear that will say to us, this is real, this is a con? Very simply, most people get cold called for these presentations. If you haven't contacted the company in the first place, put the phone down. Mm. And that's a simple answer because they are cold called every single time. So nobody who's a genuine, genuine, real, no reputable timeshare company. company will not call you mm-hmm. at no. home. All of our response is advert generated, whether it's TV, whether it's radio, whether it's newspapers, magazines, it's all generated. We do not do any cold calling. And I don't know of any genuine company that cold calls. Was that something, David, that, that you'd go along with as well, the sort of f- fourth argument? Well, I, I'd, I'd, I'd certainly say if someone rings you up a cold call and offers you a free holiday, I would put the phone down. Um, I think in addition to that, though, the, the, the other problem uh, here is it's not so much a cold call, it's a cold presentation in that you may go on holiday and um, you will be, uh, particularly if you go to resorts like Orlando or, or, or some resorts in Spain, um, you, you will be offered a presentation there and then. And, uh, and, uh, and again, I think the, the, the argument is walk away from it. Um, because that's going to be a pressure selling. It's very hard it. for a lot of people to do that. It is hard, and, and, and the trouble is, you see, you've just heard someone saying, is, oh, I feel foolish about it. Uh, after the event, you do feel foolish about it. It's like all cons. How could you believe it? Um, how, how could you be conned in that way? And that's actually one of the tricks of the con artist, is to... to pressurise you to, to say, well, I, I, I don't know well, how I could have con- believed it. That's the con, isn't it? Confidence yeah. trickster, exactly. that's the whole point. Exactly. Let's get to Bridgewater, because yeah. yeah. Sheridan's given us a call here at BBC Somerset. Hello. Tell, Good morning. Hello, tell me about your experience then. Well, we, we've been one of the lucky ones, I think, because we've had a timeshare in uh, Tenerife in Los Americas since 1989, when everyone was buying them in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, we've We've used it every year um, since '89, apart from one year, and uh, we, were, we were going to fight to go somewhere else. But uh, we, I was ill and couldn't go. But uh, I can understand what you're saying about the presentations. We've been to dozens of presentations because once you buy it, or once you've been to presentations before you buy, you know the format. They do try and pressurise you into doing it, but you just got to be. Why do you Why um, do you go to them still then? Well, because they give you a free gift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, we went, so we you went, are you we, basically we, we, you endure it for a freebie, do you? And then walk well, we've away. Got, we've had some fantastic. They gifts. must hate you. They must see you coming, Sheridan. No, because what you do is you pick out the right guy you're talking to and you say, "Look, I got no intentions of buying." And he say, "All right, fair enough. Come on, we're going to have a pint." Um, we we were one one uh, gift away from uh, going on Concord on one of the presents. Well, that's what they said. No, no, we were. That you were, were you? Because okay. the actual rep was really peed off because he he was hoping because he didn't like the couple that were up with us, 
and he said I he, he said you're the first person I've ever been been honest with us to say that we've only come because you were I was on holiday and it's only two hours and you get food you get drink and you end up with a gift but this is going back in the I'm talking back in the 90s and okay. the, 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 the modern ones aren't as good no well, aren't I mean, as good got, I like everything it's, <laughs> it's, 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 you're it's a man like, with a strong will I, I think frankly I'd, tur- I mean, I'd have turned down Concord to, you know basically it was an easier life not to go to the presentation but anyway well t- I've, flown, I've flown on Concord so it, let's it talk about much, Sheridan let's talk about the costs of timeshare is, yeah, it, is it really a better deal than choosing a bespoke holiday each summer? Uh, all depends. I mean, we can go whenever we want. We've got uh, we've got two weeks. Initially, we bought uh, a small apartment studio. We upgraded. Uh, we had a week. Then we made it into two weeks, and then we changed from uh, like a small uh, studio into a six berth. Uh, we've got our own ensuite. We're on the ground floor. There's uh, two swimming pools on the site. We pay £400 a year per week. Right, that's to us for six people. So you work that out. And we always go with RCI because they have cheaper flights than uh, most of the airlines. We go on the on the computer, have a look at the prices. And I, I've been going with RCI for years. They always come up, and I can trust them. I can send the money off. And even when XL went bust, we got our money back. Sheridan, good to speak to you. Thanks for your call today. And positive, I see that uh, in the studio, Philip is sort of smiling broadly. Can I just put a point to, to both of you here, that we hear the stories, and they're very sad stories, and we have heard from one person today who did, certainly got their fingers burnt and worst. But if somebody is uh, taken in on these sort of things, and we've been hearing about the timeshare con artists for very many years, haven't they got only one person to blame, and that's themselves? David? Well, I think I think that uh, um, when you're subject to pressure selling, and we're all subject to pressure selling in some way in some some products, uh, it's difficult to resist sometimes. And and um, I mean, Sir Francis, oh, I think was if, you get extreme... a, if you get a phone call at home saying mm. we can offer you a free holiday. Mm. Everybody nowadays should know the alarm bell should start ringing, shouldn't they? Well, they, 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 it's, it's, tra- it's strange actually because because the, there's a pressure selling technique of what they call breaking the pact, uh, and um, people go into these presentations with a pact. It's usually a couple, and the pact is that they will not buy. They go there with a complete intention of not buying, uh, and uh, that is called a pact in sales talk. And breaking the pact is a is a vital part of the process. Some people, a lot of people, do indeed walk away. Sometimes they're met with hostility when they try to walk away, uh, but some people do walk away. It's it's it's, it's unfortunate, and people say it in high. Haven't, is, you, haven't, you, so haven't you got to be an idiot to walk in in the first place, let alone walk away? Well, I think pe- people go in. I mean, they, they they take someone rings them up, and they think they're honest. I mean, you. When you deal with someone, you expect them to be honest. You don't expect, oh, well, this is a crook. Uh, and when someone rings you up on a cold call, and, and you and I might put the phone down, but, but many people have said, well, you offered a free holiday. They, are, they asked, particularly in St. Francis, they were asking, was this time shown? The answer was no. Um, but they were offered a free holiday, just sent a presentation. They believe what they're told. I okay, mean, that's and the fa- way it works. And, 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 indeed, and indeed, you know, there are some very sophisticated uh, cons around the world. You don't even have to look at Madoff uh, as a as complete con artist who, who who dealt with the most sophisticated investors. David, I must get a comment that. here before we close on this yeah. with Philip Watson from Worldwide Timeshare Hypermarket. Haven't the people who fought for this only got themselves to blame? Unfortunately, the answer to that is yes. Uh, at the end of the day, it's down to them. And in a lot of cases, I've sold face-to-face and there's no way that you can pressure someone into giving you your credit card to buy a timeshare if you don't want to. Well, it's fascinating, and thanks very much indeed for both of your comments today on the programme, to David Green and to Philip Watson. And if you've any thoughts on what you've heard today, we'd love to hear from you here at BBC Somerset. Just pick up the phone, 0845 303 1566, or email somerset at bbc.co.uk.